What's up guys, welcome back to KitGuru and to part 3 of our WD Blackout custom build. So far we've done a few case mods, hydro dipping and painting panels. If you caught the last video in this series, you'll remember that I was making a custom distro plate that is going to sit on top of the power supply shroud. I've got one or two improvements to make to that still and I'm waiting for a couple of things to come so we'll concentrate on that again towards the end of this video so make sure you stick around for that. Western Digital has kindly supplied us with a couple of M.2 SSDs for this system so the main drive that we will obviously have the Windows installation on uh, it'd be ideal for installing you know a couple of your favorite games and maybe you know the applications that you use the most that you need the fast access to that drive is this wd black sn 850 it's a one terabyte drive and it's also a pcie gen 4 drive and it is also one of the fastest pcie gen 4 drives you can get at the moment with read speeds of up to 7000 megabytes per second so this drive comes in various different forms you can get it either with just a bare pcb no heat sink or you can get it with this very nice looking WD black heatsink already pre-installed. It has a little LED on the top there. I'm not sure whether that's RGB, but I know that it does definitely light up orange to begin with. I imagine it will be RGB in this day and age. And you can see that, that heatsink, it wraps all the way around the drive. So it's a nice looking heatsink. And I imagine that it'll probably do a better job of cooling this heatsink rather than with the one that comes with the motherboard. So I want to have a look at how these drives are going to fit into the system and how they're going to look make sure that they are going to you know match in with the kind of theme that we're going to look at so this first drive i'm going to install in this top pcie slot so i'll just have a look at that and obviously that will be visible above the graphics card so i'll just take out the retaining screw and to just slot that in place just screw it down and you can see that that does look pretty much perfectly matching in with the theme of this system I really like the look of that heatsink and like I said I'm sure it'll probably do a better job than this just this like you know slab of metal that comes with the motherboard and the other drive is gonna be a storage drive so ideal for you know saving photos video if you do any video editing or anything like that also good for installing games that you might not be playing competitively and you just want to play on you know the single player campaign so you don't need the fastest access to it so that storage drive is this wd blue two terabyte sn550 this is only pcie gen 3 so it's not quite as fast as the uh, sn850 one thing with this drive which might be a, a minor issue with this build theme is the color of the pcb you can see it's got a blue pcb maybe if we install it in this second slot might not be seen with the graphics card although the graphics card is going to have water cooling on so it's only going to be probably one and a half slots thick rather than the three slots that it will be at the moment in fact yeah it'll probably still be seen because that's the that's the block that's going to be fitted on it and it'll go it's probably only one slot thick actually we we'll have to install that in that slot and just see whether we need to do anything with that blue pcb to cover it up because the last thing i want is you know like a bit of the blue pcb poking out of the side um and kind of spoiling the look of the system a little bit so we'll take a look at that and see see where that's a problem and if it is we'll have to try and work out what we can do with it there's potential that we could maybe just paint the pcb if it's seen i don't know we'll uh, have a look first anyway let's take this heat sink off the motherboard so if we pop that in that slot and just place this heat sink back over it temporarily So as I suspected, you can just see the corner of the PCB there. And if you get in really closely, you can see the edge of the PCB. Probably wouldn't annoy most people. Most people probably wouldn't see it, but you can see a little bit of a blue PCB sticking out of the edge there. And if I just hold that GPU block in position again, it's clearly quite visible. So might have a look and see if there's anything I can do about that, I guess there maybe is some kind of paint that we can use uh, to cover that up. So let's see what we can do about it. Okay, so what I've done is I've found a very thin piece of black anodized aluminium 
and I've just placed that on top of the thermal pad that goes on this heat sink. I've added a bit of 3M thermal tape as well, so that should stick to the, uh, the SSD. And if I just place that over the top, let me just pop these other screws in. With that heat sink back on top, you can just see that bit of black aluminium poking out of the edge and that's completely covered up that blue PCB. That is those little final touches that I like to do. Uh, it's not a big deal, but it does improve the look of it. And obviously that black poking out is gonna look better and is gonna match with the theme of the system rather than with a bit of blue PCB. So I'm happy with how that looks. Obviously the SN850 drive, that looks pretty perfect as it is. So that's that minor issue solved really easily. So that's the SSD sorted. Uh, there's not a lot you can do in terms of mod with M.2 SSDs. And in this build, it was basically just about getting the aesthetics right. Luckily that WD Black SN850, that works perfect with this blackout theme. And then that simple mod to the WD Blue SN550 drive. And now we're sorted with those. Before I get on to the next mod that I've got planned for this system, make sure you give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying these videos. Also, if you want to help support Kitguru, you could always subscribe to our Patreon or head over to our store and pick up some Kitguru merch. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth hardware reviews, catch up on some tech news, head over to kitguru.net. If you've watched some of these mod videos of mine before, you know that I like to pay particular attention to the cabling in the system. Uh, I like to make sure it's nice and neat and tidy. And I also like to make custom cables sleeve cables, uh, just generally make sure that, again, they fit in well with the aesthetics of the system. For this build, we've got the Corsair RM850 power supply. It's modular, so all the cables detach from the power supply. What I want to do, instead of kind of building up a full set of cables from scratch that are sleeved, I want to try and reuse these because it seems like a bit of a waste to always, you know, throw these away or dispose of them or, whatever if i'm making a complete new set so i'm gonna try and recycle these or not so much recycle because they are brand new but just you know make use of these cables we've got the 24 pin cable which is going to be probably quite easy to do it'd be a case of just removing this big sleeving that is already on it and then just individually sleeve the cables same with the cpu power cables the eps cables just going to be a case of just taking the pins out of the connectors, sleeving them, and then putting them back together again. But with the PCIe cables, it's a little more tricky. Uh, the graphics card we're using in this system has three PCIe connectors on it, so we're obviously gonna need three PCIe cables. And the type of cables that come with this RM850, they're called pigtail cables. So one end plugs into the power supply, and then on the other end, you've got a PCIe connector, but then another PCIe connector that pigtails off of that one. We don't need the pigtails, so what I'm gonna do is when I take all the pins out of the connector housing, I'm gonna either chop off the pigtail or chop off the pins and then put new pins on the end of just one PCIe connector. And then obviously, with as with the 24 pin and the EPS cables, I'm gonna sleeve them. For the sleeving, we've got some MD PCX black this was supplied to us by a company called pex and pcs in the uk we also have as well as the black i think this is called papaya orange which is again that's the theme of the system we're kind of sticking with a black and orange theme to match these m.2 drives wd black theme is kind of a black and orange theme that's what we're going for so we've got this papaya orange and instead of doing uh, like a a black then orange cable on each one of these wires. I think what I'm gonna do is like kind of a pinstripe or something like that. Not entirely sure yet, but once I get the cables apart and start having a look at how these are coming together, I'll know better. But I think that's the kind of thing I'm gonna do, like a pinstripe, mainly black with an orange pinstripe running through the cable somewhere. So that's what we need to get on with now. One other thing I need to say as well is normally, if you've seen these videos in the past and you've seen me modifying cables, you'll have seen that I tend to use um, staples, just straighten them out, push them down the individual uh, individual connectors or individual pins, 
on these connectors and then that releases the cable and lets you pull them out and do whatever you want to do whether you want to shorten them or sleeve them or whatever it'll allow you to do that but today instead i bought this nifty looking little tool from ebay this is really cheap i think it only cost me like three or four pounds or something like that this is meant to do the same job as the staples i'm not sure how long it'll last because it was really cheap but i'm going to give it a go in fact i'll give it a go on these pigtails because if it doesn't work then we've not lost anything so here goes so i'll just put it in like i would do normally with the staples just actually felt like a little like a little click or you could feel like a little notch when it located so i think that's fully located so now just grab the right wire should hopefully just pull out and it does looking at that terminal it looks fine so it looks like this has done the job uh, in fact i'll try it on another one just to see just to be sure so push it in you can hear a little click or you can feel a notch that it goes into and just give it a pull and that one's come out as well so it all looks to be intact so yeah looks like a good investment that i'll uh i'll try and leave a link in the description to that because that looks like it could be a very handy tool and it seems a bit quicker than messing about with the staples as well so looks good so as you can see i've completely removed the pci connector from that pigtail i'll be using that connector in the final cable you'll see why in a bit i've also parted all the wires they don't need to be attached to each other when the cable is sleeved. Also cut a load of um, heat shrink wrap. I'll need that for installing the sleeving. So the next thing to do is before we get too carried away and start taking all the pins out, uh, instead of using the multimeter to work out the pin outs, I'm just gonna do these one at a time. And this is where this extra PCIe connector will come in handy. So I'm just gonna start from this top corner remove the first cable and then I'm just going to see if we can get away with just snipping off this pigtail connector I'm not sure whether we'll have enough space in the connector housing after we've snipped that off for the sleeving maybe we will maybe we will just find the other end of that wire Which is this one remove it from the other end and then just measure out how long this sleeving wants to be around 62 centimeters we're looking at for that sleeving so I'll just cut one to begin with and just slide that sleeve over slide it all the way down the wire So it looks like the length is pretty good so if you see me make these custom sleeve cables before you'll see that you just have to slide over one of these bits of heat shrink wrap kind of melt the end of the sleeve in to the wire you have to be careful though because it is really hot and it does burn your fingers a little bit so that should be that one done just remove that bit of melted heat shrink so because of that pigtail that we cut off there is a bit of a like a bulge in this pt sleeving it might not be a problem but what it might do is it might just stop us from being able to push the connector back in position so i'll just see and that, that's the reason why i want to use the one or the uh, the terminal block off the pigtail because i can leave the rest of the wires in there and just push this in the position where it came from originally so let's see so that's actually quite lucky because it is tight but it does push back in so that's pretty good i'm happy with that so now that means that we can just proceed with the way that i was going to do it we'll just melt this end on
So that's the PT sleeving molded onto the terminal on the other end of that cable. So now we just need to put this back where it came from. That's one of the cables sleeved in black. Now we just got another 23 to go. So that's all the cables done. Uh, it probably took me about eight hours in total to sleeve all these cables. We've got two EPS power cables, three PCIe cables, and then the 24 pin ATX connector. It is a time consuming job doing these cables, but they do look good and it is worth it in the end when you've got the system all built up and you know, you've got these cables that are color coded to the system. I actually had a bit more of the orange left than I thought. So instead of just running just a pinstripe down and the majority of these being black what i did was with a 24 pin we've got one at the end that's black then three orange and then the rest black as well so we've got a nice thick orange stripe pcie cables if you turn them round are going to look the same they'll obviously be that way around in the system and the eps cables this similar design as well with a, a thick black stripe then the orange stripe and then just a thin black stripe on the end. So they're looking good. I'm happy with how they're looking. And while I was making those cables, the stuff for the uh, distro plate arrived. So I've done a little bit of work on that as well. So I've just moved these cables out of the way. So what I've done is I've stripped down the old distro plate, the original distro plate. And what I've done is this is the, the central piece of the distro plate. So this is an eight mil thick acrylic. And I've just roughed up the surface of this with some 240 grit wet and dry sandpaper. Apparently it will help when I'm bonding the, uh, the three plates together. Also, another thing that I've been waiting for to arrive, this is specifically designed for bonding pieces of acrylic together. Uh, it's called Acrifix 192. I've been trying to get hold of some of this in the UK. You can get hold of it, but it's not easy to get hold of it with quick delivery. Uh, we're looking at probably a week or two for delivery because uh, it's coming from abroad. Luckily, we had a very, very helpful viewer 
that has actually sent us this, uh, used a little bit of it himself and then sent the rest on to us and donated it to the project. Really grateful for that. Thanks for sending that over. Uh, it's going to be a big help. Plan is now, as well as the 8mm central plate, I'm going to upgrade the top plate and the bottom plate also from 5mm thick to 8mm thick acrylic. And using this Acrifix, I'm going to permanently bond the bottom plate to the mid plate. I'm also going to add some uh, some baffles into this larger section here and then the and then another baffle into the second section there. If you saw the original video, you'd have seen that the the water was flowing. You could you could quite clearly see the water was flowing just from this fitting to the other one uh, in that kind of direction and there was a lot of stagnant water either side that wasn't moving so putting a couple of baffles in should help it flow a bit better and uh, not allow any of that stagnant liquid or water to be there in that mid plate so once we've got the bottom and the mid plate bonded together i've also been testing out some different sealants from the top plate i want to try and keep the top plate removable uh, to a degree in case the, the distro plate needs cleaning out in the future. So I've been trying out some different sealants for that and I think I've got a sealant that will work for the top plate. If that sealant doesn't work, I'll just bond the whole thing together with this Acrifix permanently. Uh, probably not the ideal solution, but I suppose you probably can still get in to clean it if you dismantle the fittings, get in through the holes where the fittings are to a certain degree. But that's the plan anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I need to make entirely new bottom plates and mid plates, uh, bond the bottom plate on, and then I'll come back and see how it's going.
Okay, so distro plate version 2.0, it's finished. Uh, what I ended up doing in the end was permanently bonding the top and middle plates together using the Acrofix adhesive. And then on the bottom and mid plate, it's kind of a semi-permanent seal uh, using something called Tiger Seal, which is actually generally used for sealing car body panels. It's a uh, polyurethane sealant and it seems to have done a brilliant job. I've also added some baffles into these two sections of the distro plate to help with the coolant flow. And then on the bottom, I've added a drain port there that's gonna have a, uh, a tap or a valve on it. And then it should be able to be connected to the front of the case where there's actually a drain port on the front as well. So you may have seen as well that I've tested it using the pump filled with liquid, connected up to the system. No leaks there. I also have tested it using a leak tester and under pressure. There's no leaks there either. So I'm confident now that this is gonna be good for the future. Uh, oh, I also, as well, replaced the stainless steel screws with these um, high tensile black. They're not quite button head screws, they're like a button head flange screw. I also think that they look better than the stainless steel screws as well. Now that that's complete, cables are ready. Oh, and I've also got my laser cut panels back as well. So you can see this is the removable front panel. This has WD logo laser cut in it. And the otherwise usually boring back panel as well that has a WD black laser cut logo. Both those logos I'm gonna back with some colored acrylic, uh, which will help those logos stand out and make them look good. So now that we've got this finished, Everything else is ready to go. So that means we can finally get on with building the system up for real. So just a quick reminder then before we get on with building that system up. System comprises of an MSI Mag Z590 gaming carbon motherboard. And you can see we've also got some bits already pre-installed on there because of using this on the test bench. So CPU is an Intel Core i5 11600K. Storage is the WD Black SN850 one terabyte drive that we're going to be using for the Windows install. And then a storage drive, which is hidden underneath this heat sink, is the WD Blue SN550. That's a two terabyte drive, so plenty of storage there. Memory at the moment, I'm going to be using this Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro SL memory. Although, maybe I might swap that out because these RGB uh, light bars, these completely illuminate with RGB lighting. I'm not sure whether that might be a bit much for our blackout look. Uh, if it is, I'm going to switch to some Corsair Dominator uh, RGB memory instead. But it's not as bright. <laughs> Graphics, we have the Asus ROG Strix RTX 3080. This is going to be water cooled. Uh, powering the system is the Corsair RM850 power supply. I've just got hold of some of this Arctic MX5 thermal compound as well. This is brand new, so I'm going to be using this on the CPU and the GPU. Looking forward to trying that out because I've used a lot of MX4 in the past. It's always been great thermal compound, so this Arctic MX5 is supposed to be a slight improvement on the MX4. Corsair Hydro X custom loop is going to be used with our custom distro plate and obviously we've got our black and orange custom cables to go in there our laser cut panels and the case is the fantex p600s that we've also done some mods to including a bit of painting and a bit of hydro dipping in a carbon effect film so without further ado let's get on with the build
it's finished. WD Blackout is complete. What do you think? I really like how it looks. I love that combination of the all black interior and then the orange highlights, just giving it a bit of colour and just, just sets everything off really well. Uh, distro plate, our own custom made distro plate, looks great on top of that power supply shroud. And we've managed to achieve that effect I was going for with these vertical and parallel cooling pipes. I was not 100% certain that that was going to work. When I started this project, we had a few trials and tribulations and a few different revisions of that distro plate, but it's in there, everything lines up. I had to use this offset fit in here, but I did mention that earlier because otherwise these would have been too close and it would have been a bit of a pain to make, but everything else lines up pretty much perfectly. So I'm really pleased with that. Uh, that's something I'm definitely gonna do again in the future. I'll be building another distro plate in a build in the future for sure. In terms of the RGB lighting, I've just stuck with a, a solid orange. I think it works really well. The WD Black SN850 drive that has its own little orange light on there as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm really happy. I think it looks absolutely perfect. So let us know what you think of the WD Blackout build in the comment section. Is this the kind of thing that you like or would you prefer more RGB and a bit less less blackout uh, i really like it but let's know what you think so before we wrap this up i just want to have a recap really of what we did and the hardware that we use so the case is a modified fantex p600s we hydro dipped the top front panel and this power supply shroud using a block carbon hydrographic film motherboard is a msi z590 gaming carbon wi-fi the cpu is an intel core i5 11600k the whole cooling system was provided by corsair so this is all hydro x so there's an xd5 pump the xc5 new cpu block i like that cpu block i prefer it to the xc7 gpu water block that's also a hydro x block this is the new corsair satin black tubing i love how that looks as well and all the fittings and everything else all hydro x oh except for the the offset fitting there that was a, a barrel fitting but everything else is corsair hydro x and then obviously our custom distro plate there sat on the power supply shroud memory as well corsair dominator I ended up changing the uh the vengeance rgb sl for the dominator the sl was just a bit too much light the uh, the light bars were just just a bit too much i prefer the look of the dominator uh, but i'll use that in another build i'm sure and then all the fans in the system we've got a total of seven fans so three up on the top on this 360 ride three in the front as intakes and then one as an exhaust they're all corsair sp120 rgb rgb elite there's too many too many to remember Power supply is also Corsair, RM850, and obviously the storage uh, was provided by Western Digital, who sponsored this build. One terabyte WD Black SN850, PCIe Gen 4, NVMe drive, super fast drive, and then for a storage drive, we had a two terabyte WD Blue SN550 M.2 SSD drive as well. And then in terms of the mods, custom distro plate made from scratch, all working, not leaking, and I'm certain now that that is going to be leak free forever. Hydro dipping of the case, panels on the top, uh, the power supply shroud and the front. Obviously, some of these panels can be removed for more airflow. Uh, another little mod as well on the front panel, you can see we've got this WD laser cut logo, and I've just backed that with some orange acrylic. As well as the case mods, I also made some custom cables, so PCIe cables the 24 pin ATX cable and the EPS power cables, although you can't even see those, but I made those using the stock cables and just sleeve them with the PET sleeving in black and orange. Then if we turn the system around, we've got another laser cut WD black logo. I back that with white acrylic, so it matches the WD black logo on the M.2 SSD driver. Then if we open this door up, you can see we've made a reasonably neat job of the cabling around the back. We've also got a Corsair Commander Pro that's obviously controlling all the RGB lighting of the Corsair parts, controlling some of the fans as well and the pump speed and all that. And then down here as well, I also fitted a drain to the cooling system so you can remove the front panel 
undo the, uh, the drain here and you should be able to pretty easily drain the coolant out of the system. So that's the WD Black project finished. It's been a very interesting project. Making that distro plate from scratch wasn't easy, but it's definitely been worthwhile and it's given us another skill that we can use in the future. Next time out, we've got a really special project coming. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but it's going to be an absolutely huge build. So make sure you do not miss that one. And if you've enjoyed this project, let us know what you think in the comment section. Let us know what you think of this system now it's all finished. And if you have enjoyed watching this WD Blackout project, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. You can also now become a member of the channel on YouTube. So click the join button and you can see what your options are if you do want to become a member. And as always, you can head over to kickguru.net to catch up on the in-depth hardware reviews, catch up on some tech news. And if you want to help support the channel, subscribe to our Patreon, head over to our store and pick up some merch. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.